I'm Chiquita Mullins-Lee, Arts Learning Coordinator for the Ohio Arts Council, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to Ohio's 12th Annual Poetry Out Loud State Finals. The Poetry Out Loud National Recitation Contest is an arts education initiative generously sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts and the Poetry Foundation in association with the Ohio Arts Council. I've had the privilege of experiencing some, experiencing some of the best poetry ever written, recited by high school students who learned about poetry and about themselves through Poetry Out Loud. And I am so pleased to present our 12 state finalists competing for the opportunity to represent Ohio at the national competition in Washington, D.C. These students come from all across the state and have put in many hours of practice to get to this point. Each of them competed at their high school, then at one of our six regional semifinals and earned the honor of representing their school and their region at the state finals today. And here they are. The top six, the top six highest scoring students from the first two rounds will recite a third poem in the final round. The contestants will be scored in six categories, physical presence, voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness, evidence of understanding, overall performance, and accuracy. For this formidable task, I'd like to thank our three distinguished judges, Rose Smith, Steve Abbott, Terry Hermson. The government reminded me of my father with its deafness and its laws. And the weather reminded me of my mom with her tropical squalls. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried loud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. You see the lightning, but not the thunder. What God hath joined, let no man put asunder. Did God know you'd marry a rat? What kind of delusion are you under? For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. It is more onerous than the rights of beauty or housework, harder than love. But you expect it of me casually. The boot is famous to the earth, more famous than the dress shoe, which is famous only to floors. The bent photograph is famous to the one who carries it, and not at all famous to the one who is pictured. My youth is gone, and yet I am but young. I saw the world, and yet I was not seen. I will arise and go now. For always, night and day, I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. Today, we woke up to a revolution of snow, its white flag waving over everything. The landscape vanished. And what does beauty do to a man? Don Juan, Casanova, Lord Byron, those fiery eyes and steel jaw lines confront a furnace of self-loathing. You are sweet, O oh love, dear love. You are soft as the nesting dove. Come to my heart and bring it to rest as the bird flies home to its welcome nest. Someday, when trees have shed their leaves and against the morning's white, the shivering birds beneath the eaves have sheltered for the night. We'll turn our faces southward. The results are in. 
now we will announce the names of the six students with the highest scores from round one and two combined. Mary Simons, St. Joseph Academy. <laughs> Ashley Stull, Kettering Fairmont High School. Madeline Schroeder, Columbus Alternative High School. Magnus Sabo, Upper Arlington High School. Brianna McGee, Springfield High School. Genevieve Urban, The Lyceum. What the heart of the young man said to the psalmist, tell me not in mournful numbers life is but an empty dream, for the soul is dead that slumbers and things are not what they seem. Life is real, life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal. Dost thou art to dust returnest, was not spoken of the soul, not enjoyment, not sorrow is our destined end or way, but to act that each tomorrow find us farther than today. Art is long and time is fleeting, and our hearts, though stout and brave, Still, like muffled drums, are beating funeral marches to the grave. In the world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb, driven cattle. Be a hero in the strife. Trust no future, however pleasant. Let the dead past bury its dead. Act. Act in the living present, heart within, and God o'erhead. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime. And departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another, sailing o'er life's solemn main, forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing with a heart for any fate, still achieving, still pursuing. Learn to labor and to wait. In the laboratory waiting room, in the laboratory waiting room containing one television actor with a teary face trying a contact lens, two muscular victims of industrial accidents, several vain women, I was one of them, came Deborah, four, to pick up her glass eye. It was a long day, Deborah waiting for the blood vessels painted on her iris to dry. Her mother said that, holding Deborah when she was born. First I inspected her from toes to navel, then stopped at her head. We wondered why the inspection hadn't gone the other way. Looking into her eye was like looking into a volcano. Her vacant pupil went whirling down, down to the foundation of the world. When she was three months old, they took it out. She giggled when she went under the anesthetic. Forty-five minutes later, she came back happy. The gas wore off. She found the hole in her face. You know it never bled. Stayed happy. Even when I went to pieces. She's five in June. A Debra, you get right down from there, or I'll have to slap. Laughing, 
Deborah climbed into the lap of one vain lady who had been discontented with her own beauty. Now she held on to Deborah, looked her steadily in the empty eye. I find no peace, and all my war is done. I fear and hope. I burn and freeze like ice. I fly above the wind, yet can I not arise? And not I have, and all the world I season, that looseth nor locketh holdeth me in prison, and holdeth me not. Yet can I scape no wise, nor letteth me live, nor die at my device, and yet of death it giveth me occasion. Without ein I see, and without tongue I plain. I desire to perish, and yet I ask help. I love another, and thus I hate myself. I feed me in sorrow, and laugh in all my pain, likewise displeaseth me both life and death. And my delight is causer of this strife. We aren't serious when we're 17. One fine evening to hell with beer and lemonade, noisy cafes with their shining lamps. We walk under the green linden trees of the park. The lindens smell good in the good June evenings. At time, the air is so scented that we close our eyes. The wind laden with sounds. The town isn't far has the smell of grapevines and beer. There, you can see a very small patch of dark blue framed by a little branch, pinned up by a naughty star that melts in gentle quivers, small and very white. Night in June. Seventeen years old, we are overcome by it all. The sap is champagne and goes to our head. We talked a lot and feel a kiss on our lips, trembling there like a small insect. Our wild heart moves through novels like Robinson Crusoe, one in the light of a pale street lamp. A girl goes by attractive and charming under the shadow of her father's terrible collar. And as she finds you incredibly naive while clicking her little boots, she turns abruptly and in a lively way. Then Caventina's die on your lips. You are in love. Occupied until the month of August, you are in love. Your sonnets make her laugh. All your friends go off, you are ridiculous. Then, one evening, the girl you worship deigned to write to you. That evening, you return to the bright cafes. You ask for beer or lemonade. We're not serious when we are 17. And when we have green linden trees in the park. When it comes to clothes, make an allowance for the unexpected. Be sure the spare in the trunk of your station wagon with wood paneling isn't in need of repair. A simple jean jacket says, 
Hey, if you aren't trying to smuggle rare Incan coins through this peaceful little town and kidnap the local orphan, I can be one heck of a mellow kind of guy. It doesn't matter how angry a man gets, a smile and a soft stroke on his bicep can work wonders. I learned that men also have nipples, warm and established. Green doesn't always mean envy. It's the meadows full of clover and chicory the Hulk seeks for rest, a return to normal. And sometimes a woman gets to go with him, her tiny hands correcting his rumpled hair, the cuts in his hand. Green is the space between water and sun, cover for a quiet man, each rib shuttling drops of liquid light. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures, were ranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I, sitting, heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon, unaccountable, I became tired and sick till, rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself in the mystical, moist night air and, from time to time, looked up in perfect silence at the stars. Okay, the results are in. We will announce our three winners. This year is the fourth year we will be giving out a first, second, and third place winner's award specifically designed for our Poetry Out Loud state finals. Each piece has been individually designed and includes two lines from guest poet Maggie Smith's poem, Good Bones. Students, here we go. Our third place winner is Magnus Sabo, Upper Arlington High School. We are serious when we're 17. In addition to this framed original print, which you, you're showing everyone, you, you will also receive a check for $100 for yourself with an additional $100 for your school library to buy poetry books. The second place winner is Brianna McGee, Springfield High School. It's the meadows full of clover and chicory the hope seeks for rest. In addition to the frame print, you will also receive a check for $200 for yourself and $200 more for your school library to buy more poetry books. And now, the first place prize the winner of Ohio's 12th annual Poetry Out Loud competition and our new Ohio Poetry Out Loud state champion is Madeline Schroeder, Columbus Alternative High School. Love another and thus I hate myself. We will also have a check for $300 for you and a $500 check for your school library so more students can follow in your footsteps. We wish you all the best as you travel to Washington, D.C. to represent Ohio at the Poetry Out Loud National Finals.